In this video, I will show you how to use the pencil tool to create free form designs in Adobe Illustrator. One change you might notice from the last video is that I removed some of the strokes. I just didn't think everything needed to be outlined, but this is a personal preference. The ones I left in are acting as trim around the windows and doors. Before I start using the pencil tool, I'd like to add some land for the house to sit on. I have other plans for the sky, which I'll show in future videos. I'll use my shaper tool to draw a large rectangle, filling the bottom part of my artboard. Then selecting the rectangle with the selection tool, I will change the fill to a shade of green and make the stroke transparent. If it bothers you that the rectangle is larger than the artboard, you can adjust its bounding box to fit. Then I will right click and arrange the rectangle so that it is sent to the back of the house. Notice that I have my horizon line cutting through the house instead of right at its base. I feel that it gives the drawing more depth. In my layers panel, I'm going to lock the layer with my shapes. Then go down to the bottom right corner, click the plus sign and create a new layer. I will name this layer pencil tool. Now think of layers as layers of a cake. The shaper tool layer has been baked to perfection. I'm gonna put it in the fridge to cool. I'm gonna lock the fridge so I'm not tempted to take a bite. Then I'm gonna work on the next layer of cake and add some decorations to it. But first, notice that each layer has a different colored bar. It's okay if your colors don't match mine. This is a color-coded system that lets you know what layer you're working on. I will double click to change the color of this layer because it's too similar to the one I have below it. Now everything that is drawn on this layer will be highlighted magenta when selected. If your workspace is set up like mine, you will find the pencil tool in the left column, sixth icon down in the toolbar, and it's nested underneath the shaper tool. Click and hold on the shaper tool and the pencil tool will be the second item in the list. I'm going to zoom in to this tree and give you a demonstration first. I will draw a freehand version of this tree and go back to the starting point so I close the shape. No giggling at my drawing, please. You can see that it's a bit rough, so I will show you some tools that you can use to improve the outcome. Pay attention to the cursor and notice that when I'm back at the starting point, next to my cursor, there is a tiny circle that indicates a closed path. But wait, what just happened to the first tree that I drew? This is a very common situation for beginners. I'll grab my selection tool and you can see that both drawings are still there. Notice that the fill and stroke colors are transparent. So I'll click on one of the swatches and I'll give the drawings a stroke color, voila. I can also give it a fill color since it's a closed shape. Using my selection tool, I can also click on the drawing to bring up a bounding box, and then I can resize, rotate, and move the drawing. One more tree demo, since I know how beautiful they are. If you stop drawing in the middle, you can come back to one of the endpoints and continue where you left off. If you want to redraw something, you don't need to delete or erase what you've drawn already. Instead, with the drawing still selected, you can go back over and redraw this line. And you can do this as many times as you like, but be careful. Sometimes it will add an additional line instead of correcting the original. So I'm just going to edit undo to get rid of that extra line and then continue drawing on top of the original to reshape it. Under the shaper tool in the toolbar, you've also got the path eraser tool if you wanna completely erase part of the drawing and start again. Now I keep going back to the toolbar to change tools, but notice this arrow on the right hand side. When you click this, it will pull out all of those tools into a panel that you can move anywhere within your workspace. If you hover over the icons, you can still see which tools they are until you memorize the icons or the shortcut keys. Now that last line I just drew is a little squiggly. I can use the smooth tool to trace over the line and even it out. So I have shown you in the panel the pencil tool, the smooth tool, and the path eraser tool. There's one last tool from this panel, and that's the join tool. To demonstrate it, I'm going to draw a rectangle, and I'm going to not quite close the path of that rectangle. Then I'll select the join tool, and I'll scrub over the section, and it will automatically close that path. Now I can select that drawing, and I can fill it with a color. 
I'll go ahead and select all of these demo drawings and delete them for now. And then I'll show you how I use my pencil tool to add details to my house drawing. I want to extend the trunk of this tree with a brown stroke and I can change the size of my stroke by increasing its points up here. Points indicate the weight or the thickness of the stroke line. When I come to add a branch to the tree, instead it reshapes the stroke that I just drew. Remember that you can reshape your drawing using the pencil tool. So what you have to do is make sure you draw far away from the previous drawing or use the selection tool to deselect the last thing you drew. Now I can come close and add more branches. You're probably noticing that the selection tool is used frequently. The letter V is the shortcut key to switch to that tool without having to click on it in the toolbar. To go back to the pencil tool, hit the N key. It would be good for your wrist to start using the shortcut keys. They're also called hotkeys. With the branches selected, I can change their shape. Click on the word stroke to show the stroke panel. Here you can change the end caps, the corners, the alignment, and the overall profile of the stroke. So this panel is very helpful in allowing you to vary the looks of your strokes. I'll click back to uniform. And now one of my favorite end caps is the round cap. It's very popular. Notice that you have the same profile choices here. Now don't worry about these brush choices, but you can use this slider to change the opacity slash transparency of your colors. Next, I will show you how you can change the fidelity of your lines. Double click on the pencil tool or with the pencil tool selected, hit return or enter on your keyboard to bring up the pencil tool options panel. Fidelity is how faithfully your line is drawn and you can make it more accurate to match exactly how you're moving your cursor or you can have the line be more smooth and fluid. I'll demonstrate the difference by drawing two sides of a path going out from the door of my house. This line is very accurate to how I moved my mouse. So now I'll demonstrate the opposite end of the spectrum, a smooth line. And you'll see that this path is more fluid and it even straightened out this whole section of the line. It's good to know what each extreme does, but a midpoint is a good compromise between the two, and that's where the pencil tool is always defaulted. I want to fill in the path, so I need to have a closed shape. I will draw a line on one end, and I'll use the Join tool to connect the path, and then test with my Selection tool to see that they are indeed connected. And I'll do the same with the other side. Now that it is a closed shape, I can go up to the fill color and fill it in. I want to balance out the picture plane, so I'm going to sketch a pond on the left hand side. And I'll go back any rough areas with my pencil tool to redraw and fill out the sketch. And then I can use my smooth tool to smooth out any points and make it a more fluid, rounded drawing. I can also use my selection tool to reshape and scale the drawing. But my favorite use of the pencil tool has got to be adding details to drawings to make them look more three-dimensional. I particularly pay attention to areas that need shading and highlights. But if you wanna make changes after you've added details, you need to move them as one using the selection tool. Make sure you click on all parts while holding shift and then right click and you can group them together. Oops, it looks like I missed this little section. So I'll click on it and use my arrow keys on my keyboard to scooch it up into place. If you wanna make a perfectly straight line with the pencil tool, hold the shift key as you draw. You can make a vertical, horizontal, or a 45 degree line in any direction with the shift key. If you want to make a straight line, but it doesn't need to be at a 45 degree angle, then you can hold the Alt or Option key on your keyboard while you draw. The last demo I want to show you is about arranging different objects within your picture plane. So we know that you can always right click, go down to arrange and bring things to the front or the back. But there is also another way that you can do this in your layers. 
I'll click on the plus sign on the bottom to add another layer, and then I'll double click inside the text to rename it, and this is going to be the layer where I will draw some shrubs. I'll close my layers panel, making sure I'm on that shrubs layer before I do so. And then using my pencil tool, I'm gonna sketch out some shrubs along the left and right hand sides of my picture plane. And I will come back to the start, making sure that they are closed shapes. My shrubs are in front of the house and in front of the other trees. And because they're on different layers, right click and arrange won't work. So in my layers panel, I'm gonna click on shrubs, drag it down below the other layers, and now they are moved behind everything else. Before I continue drawing, I wanna make sure I know which layer I'm on and that I have the pencil tool selected. Now that's it for all my tips and tricks for the pencil tool, but I am far from done with this drawing. So for this last little bit, I'm gonna fast forward my screen recording as I add many, many more details to this image. In Illustrator, everything can be changed, moved, deleted, redrawn, and recolored, so I encourage you to try out different techniques and combinations. The pencil tool can add organic touches to your work, and the possibilities are endless. So I hope you have as much fun with your creation as I have had with mine. The last step is to save my work, so I'm going to go up to File, Save As, and I always save it as my first name, last initial, underscore what it is. This is Unit 01.4 Pencil Tool. I'll save it to my Creative Cloud file and my folder for this class. Click Save and click Replace because I already had the same version of this and OK. And that's how you use the Pencil Tool to add freeform elements to your artwork in Illustrator.